Good morning. You know, palm trees, apparently, I don't know if it's totally decided or controversial, but they're not trees. These are not trees. You can prove me wrong. I won't lose sleep over it. But I heard that actually they behave like grasses. Their internal structure is like a grass. Isn't that interesting? Palm trees aren't trees, they're like grass. But I'm not the botanical expert and maybe there's some botanists listening that can bring light to the situation. Let's walk along here because the water has gone down quite a ways and some of this should have dried up a bit although we had a little rain a few days ago. This water never stops, it's coming in through uh, the site here like we have commented many times and this is just a protection so that it doesn't clog up and our site isn't flooded as we already learned the hard way it's the time to check all drains here and systems so that if heavy rain comes hey they put a new graffiti on here I don't know what that means like another area of inexpertise to understand the culture of graffiti that goes back in Roman times and probably as old as humanity. Let's see how far over we can go here without sinking in the ground. As far as you can see the clay there, that's how far the, the uh, that, how do you call it, that walkway, with those blue cubes, they were all arranged along here, and yellow and other colors. And it would go out to about where the end of that is there, and it was water above waist high at that point, boats could sit on it. The ground is a little moist here. So right now the water would be up to the camera almost here. And it's up at my chest. Chest high. All the life that was here inside the water and before the water. Oops, now that's getting soft here. So just look at this footprint I made. And there's a big shell, a mollusk of some kind. Fresh water. The thing is that originally the Jordan Valley was part of the Red Sea waters, like all that area. But because of the geological activity, the, um, the plates, the tectonic plates movements over ancient periods of earth history 
I just need to check where I'm walking here because I don't want you to sink with me here. In the Dead Sea, it's more difficult because there are actually sinkholes that have swallowed up buildings. But I don't think that's the case here, so you don't have to be too worried. See, these were about seven or eight years ago, these were trees that were fully standing here. And the, when the water rose, then they died because the water was high for quite five or six years. And this put an end to all the vegetation along here. This pipe had its function once upon a time. So today we have a great message of hope and how the whole of creation is groaning. Imagine all the struggle here for the plants as the water was choking them or the struggle of the plants as they came up through the ground, pushed their way up and then the predators, the animals in here in the water, the different types of fish and the predators and the birds perched on the treetops ready for the fish to be available for breakfast. Fresh sh uh, sh shuki, what do you call it? There are all those uh, walking platforms up there to go walk out in the water. So let's read a, a line or two from this beautiful reading today, a powerful reading. The whole of creation is groaning. And I think in our times we are experiencing that very much. Obviously, with the rise of communications technology, then we are enabled to participate more directly in the brutality of the conflicts in our times that would have been unthinkable before and that obviously arouses a lot of passion and then that's also open to manipulation but it does tell a very gruesome story the question then are intentions and interpretations and the brokenness of humanity so we go back to this text of the Romans and it says, I consider, well, that's a, a second part of the story here. For creation awakes with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. But in selfishness, children of selfishness destroy creation. The children of God hopefully take care of creation all the gifts. Creation was made subject to futility. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains until now. Even until now, Paul says, that's 2000 years ago. Not only that, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit also groan within ourselves. As we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies, for in hope we were saved. Let's go back to the first line. 
Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. The sufferings are as nothing. And the sufferings are big, people. The sufferings are very big. And yet, Paul is saying they are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits the e with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. And in the last line of this text today is in the last lines, for in hope we were saved. Now hope that sees for itself is not hope, because you already have it. A child is hoping for an ice cream or for a ride to Disneyland, but once it happens, they're no longer hoping, they're enjoying it. For hope that sees for itself is not hope. For who hopes for what one sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. And there's the word also about suffering, waiting with endurance. Knowing how to wait. Knowing how to wait for the winter rains that are so important for the crops. Knowing how to wait for the time to be ready for harvest. Knowing how to, to work patiently, studying how to write letters, how to write sentences, how to write an essay, how to write a book. The hard work, the diligent work, the constant work. And that in the midst of sufferings, in the midst of bereavements, in the midst of illnesses, in the midst of frustrations, and then in the horrible array of assaults and attacks and hostilities. Persevering, but if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. It's marvelous when you meet people who have been able to go through a lot of difficult relationships, raising children, people in war situations. I just watched the family staying with us here. They have a certain level of, of comfort and, and food and everything. But imagine then families that are uh, forced out of their homes, out of their homesteads. They have no secured food, no secured lodgings, and to still educate their children. Ireland went through a very hard history in the 16, 1700s, and education was banned by a hostile government. They didn't want the Irish children to learn. And then they developed hedge schools. So there were wandering teachers who would go around the countryside and and the people began to know them as ugly has to be hush hush. They had to ha enjoy a measure of protection from the community and to educate. And there was a famous English poet who traveled in Ireland and he, I'd have to find a text of that now, but he, he spoke so uh, wonderfully about the level of education that they knew the Aeneid by heart In Greek, in Latin, the classics, they knew them by heart. They, the children had learned them. The head school masters had accomplished that level of instruction. And a bigger task is even to, in the, the, the endurance it takes to educate children to not hate in a time of war, in a time of conflict. Those are the great virtues.
But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. And that's the great issue of our hope. Again, this is also a theme that's very much at this time of the liturgical year, at the end of the year, the end of our life. Our faculties are failing. Our relationships are becoming more challenging. We don't hear well. We don't see well. Maybe we don't have too many visitors. We don't see the family that much. A lot of challenges, health issues. And this is the great endurance. So the person is being shaped in the great quality of endurance with hope, with the joy that comes from true hope, perseverance. Endurance is an extraordinary quality, great, great virtue. Endurance with love, endurance with understanding, with comprehension. I'm sure patience is a big part of that and that's the first quality of love. So patience is actually a work of love. You know, I just lost my uh, text and it got disconnected. So I'm, we just leave it like that for today. There are a lot of beautiful thoughts in the gospel, in the psalm. But I leave that to you guys. So let's do it like this. Let's see you later, alligator, right here. Our little goodbye selfie. God bless you. Look around you, see all the blessings and prepare for the path of endurance, of growing capacity of endurance.